Osmara, the capital of Eritrea. I can't get over my astonishment. All around me, beautiful buildings from the Italian colonial era. Cinemas, mosques, a futuristic filling station. Very different from other African cities. At the weekend, people don't just worship. They indulge in what's called the third religion here, next to Islam and Christianity, bicycling. Breathing, yeah, something that you can breathe in with air. I've come here with mixed feelings. Journalists aren't welcome here. It took months to get a visa. There's no roaming to other mobile phone networks, so I'm unreachable. It's a completely unfamiliar feeling. Asmara is clean, there's scarcely any traffic, and the climate is pleasant. Yet Eritrea has been called the African North Korea, from which an estimated 2,000 people flee every month. Eritrea's president, Isaiah Selfwerki, was once seen as a ray of hope. Now the West considers him one of the most authoritarian heads of state in Africa. In a conversation at the foreign ministry, the international community and especially the U.S. are presented in a negative light. We're allowed to shoot footage, but not to use the conversation as an interview. The idea of comparing Eritrea to North Korea is met with indignation. Faced with the question of why so many people flee, I'm told Europe and the U.S. are at fault for luring them away. It's not the first time Eritreans have fled abroad. During the 30-year war against Ethiopia, many did so. After Eritrean independence in 1993, some returned. The Eritro-German Cultural Center was founded back then for people returning from Germany. Alexander Sayum teaches German at the center's language school. His pupils are young Eritreans who are interested in Germany, as they tell me cautiously. Three of the young women are married to Eritreans who live in Germany, so they'll soon be allowed to emigrate. It's a highly developed country. I want to continue my education there, and I think I can live better there than here. Siyum grew up in Wuppertal in Germany. He's been back in Eritrea for 10 years, but still feels German. For ordinary Eritreans, it's normal to live like this. It's not normal for me. I grew up differently. I have a different mentality, a different way of thinking, more democratic, and you have to tolerate some things. For instance, the fact that there's no press freedom. The city is full of satellite dishes with unlimited reception of international channels. But in Eritrea as a whole, there's just one newspaper and one government TV station. The average annual income is the equivalent of about 600 euros, lower than almost anywhere else in the world. Against the beautiful backdrop of Asmara, extreme poverty prevails. Everywhere on the streets, people try to earn a bit of extra money. Many resort to begging. I try to talk to a few passers-by, but it's almost impossible as soon as they see the camera. People seem to be too frightened to indulge in even harmless conversation. I'm told that to understand Eritrea, you have to understand the war. I visit a tank graveyard, discarded scrap from the War of Independence against Ethiopia. Eritrea still feels threatened by its neighbor. That's why the strict military service every Eritrean has to complete after finishing school can last for decades, virtually without pay. It's also why a very high portion of Eritreans get refugee status in Europe. But I'm told that no one leaves just because of that. The country's disastrous economic situation is an additional factor. Hardly anything is produced in Eritrea itself. The raw materials for the state-run brewery are imported. Officially, the brewery operates around the clock, despite shortages of water and electricity. I notice that it's mainly older men who work here. 
men who by our standards would have retired long ago. The brewery manager explains to me the absence of young workers. <laughs> because the young uh, are not very much attracted to join us because of the salary. <laughs> uh, our salaries are, I mean, not quite attractive. In the Moultrie, we have younger people there because uh, we have a better uh, salary scale there. But still, we have elderly workers, and they are the most disciplined. Mm. There's quite a different average age at the Dolce Vita shirt factory, the only private factory in Eritrea. More than 500 people work in the Italian-run plant. They earn more than the country's average wage. Manager Pietro Zambaiti is well aware of the migration problem. Employees are constantly leaving. He wants to try to keep them by providing better wages and social benefits. But he understands why so many go. Things are not changing at the moment, but I'm sure that, uh, as I said, uh, things can change uh, if uh, probably they also need help, uh, they need trust. Uh, European government, uh, they should really open. And uh, I think that other cases around the world have shown that uh, only through development comes democracy and the people grow. Uh, and uh, s cannot come uh, by force uh, or anything. This beautiful country provides me with plenty of food for thought. I sense despair, fear, and resignation lurking beneath the unblemished surface. But no one would admit that publicly. Presumably during my stay, hundreds more have left Eritrea.